Hey guys. Ah, Jim Bounds at Motorhome Rehab Ranch, and boy, I tell you what, I didn't know how much that trip was uh, going to affect me. Man, <clears throat> I got home and did a video, and bam, knocked out for a couple of days. Uh, you know, I think, I really think it's the cold. I was I was listening to uh, NPR today, and they said that that the less uh, uh, light hours affect some folks and they have uh, you know they don't want to work during the winter I think I'm one of those guys um, it's cold I you know I'm, I've even got long sleeves on here <laughs> well look last time we uh, we talked we were talking about <clears throat> delivering your motor home getting there not relying on anything uh, just what you needed to, all right? And of course, all of us down here. Well, the uh, the one that we delivered had a had a fuel injection system very similar to this one, and uh, <clears throat> the snorkel over here gives you a uh, opportunity to put a uh, a real nice air cleaner over here right there right well this the uh, Dennis's coach also had that well one thing though that remember <laughs> the thing that that uh, 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 convinced us to stop where we threw belts and there was a very good question as to well why did you throw belts um, there were there were two things that we had uh, uh, going uh, against us first thing it's partly my fault and don't forget this don't forget this when you put on new belts you torque them, you tighten them, you drive through a heat cycle, you stop, let it cool down, and you retighten them, right? Well, I take responsibility for that because we left Gainesville. We had new fresh belts on there, tightened them all up. Actually, the alternator only had one bolt on the back holding it. I put a second bolt in it, okay? Tighten the, tighten the belts down. It threw at about 1,200 miles. See, don't forget this. You need to tighten your belts. We should have stopped at breakfast or something, let it cool down, tighten the belts, and go back. So that was, that was a mistake, and that was my mistake. But the other problem, <clears throat> and... One thing that, that, this is, of course, my motor. One thing that this alternator has, I'm going to bring you down here and show you. There is a bracket from right here, this swing arm, down to the block to keep it from rolling forward. Now, granted, this is a 455. That was a 403. The 403s have a cast piece here. <clears throat> but when it pulls forward, when you accelerate, when you rev the engine up, watch the alternator. If you don't have a bracket on the back of this, the alternator pulls forward a little bit. Right here. Come on, let me show you this. All right. Let's see. Not real good at one. Okay. See this bracket right here? Right. Comes from the swing arm bolt. Comes down and goes down to the head. Right there. That bolt prevents it from swinging forward. Okay? Check your coach. See if you have that bolt coming off the swing arm. Right there. Guess what? <clears throat> the coach that uh, we drove out did not have that. So, I have to say 
that along with the fact that I did not check the belts, <coughs> fresh belt will stretch. Along with that, and that alternator pulling forward because it threw the belts going up a hill when it torqued down. Uh, and uh, at that point, <laughs> I'd already put on the fresh set of belts that we had. Didn't have another set of belts. And like I said, we were one, one day's drive from uh, his his place so we had we pretty much got it there right now a couple other things that you want to consider if you pick up your coach and it fires it runs up okay and now you need to drive it home <clears throat> whether that's 200 miles or 2,000 miles I had a guy he's going to go drive it cross country all right so this is some of the stuff that you should uh, you should consider uh, when you're when you're uh, recovering a coach, right? First thing, there are four bolts holding the quadrujet carburetor down. Two in the front are big long ones. Two in the back are little short ones. It's a half inch wrench or a crescent wrench. <clears throat> tighten those down. Snug them down. Not tighten. Thing is there's a thermal gasket there's a big thick gasket and there's four ceramic washers that pulls down tight as the uh the gasket heats up and all this stuff it shrinks okay so you might need to re-tighten those four bolts very very important i feel if somebody's not touched it in a while you may be surprised on how how loose those things are Second thing is over here, <coughs> move this baby out of the way. Over here is your oil fill. Okay. Now, this one has a uh, Dick Patterson Springfield Ignition silicon oil elbow on it. If yours is black or it's wrapped with duct tape or something like that, that's the oil fill. That's from out front, comes in and fills it up. Uh, that's a real leak point. Fumes and stuff come out of there. You want to look at that. If yours is looking pretty rough or it's been rigged up, some people try to rig it up with heater hose that deteriorates. Uh, you want to get hold of uh, um, uh, GMC uh, or R, uh, GMC RV, uh, Jim Kanamata, uh, and they'll have the silicone boots. The now there are some black boots available. But the black boot is a nitrile boot. It has a seam on it. It's a, it's a molded piece. And what happens is the nitrile rubber is, is, uh, is attacked by the fumes, and that's where the fumes come up. <coughs> so those black boots, are they're going to go out within a year, two years tops. You want to get the, uh, the silicon boot, uh, which uh, is oil resistant. And Dick Patterson, I I feel very honored to have one of Dick Patterson's uh, silicon elbows. Um, so <clears throat> that's a very, very important thing. If you find that yours is beat up or whatever, you can put an oil cap on that. Or put a breather cap on it. That keeps stuff out of it. Then when you get home, the one thing that's important is to have a remote oil fill. Because it does use oil. I mean, you're going to use average, you're going to use oil about a uh, quart every 800 to 1,000 miles, which means when you check it out front and you find your low, you want to fill it out front. This elbow is on the outside and in here, okay? All right. <clears throat> That's kind of an unusual thing. You don't see that in a car. Understand, this is a Tornado motor. Okay, it's nothing fancy. It's nothing special. It's a it's a it's a it's a big block V8 from the 70s. All right, so it's not anything real special other than I mean, if you rebuild it, you could have you know sp specific specifications to pull loads. But honestly, every bolt is just out of the Tornado. Okay, so use common sense on things. When you look at the coach, if it's got really old plug wires, seriously, if you're going to re recover a coach and it fires up, then great. Change the plugs and change the plug wires. 
You say, why? Well, that, that filament could be, who, who knows how old it is. It starts to crack. It starts to, to spark. All right? If it runs, if it fires, okay. Plugs, plug wires, cap, rotor, module, distributor module. Um, yeah, it is 76 Tornado distributor module. Same time, you want to keep, you want to put a coil and you want to have a pickup with you. Okay. So all those parts are all of the fire part of fuel and fire. I mean, really. Okay. Uh, uh, the other part, if you're on a carburetor, if you're on a fuel injection, we'll get there in a minute. <clears throat> but when you, you've got a carburetor. In the front of the carburetor, fuel line comes in because right around real tight uh, around the uh, thermostat housing. Very tight bend. Understand something. Whenever you bend metal, you fracture it. Okay? And that's a pretty obtuse bend right there. So what I want you to do is to really look at it very carefully. And if you have a, uh, a hose clamp up there or something, be very, very careful. When you get home, you want to change that. You don't want to have any hose clamps or anything. What you find a lot of people to try to get that bend, they'll bend it and then they'll they'll uh, put a hose clamp and rub a rubber hose going down. Um, <clears throat> GMC RV has uh, uh, the uh, Teflon line braided stainless hose that we used to uh, offer at Co-op. Real nice hose. See what you've got there. Now again, you're trying to get home with it, so. Make sure that, that no fuel line on the top could possibly leak. Very, very important. All right. Um, uh, part of the fuel part <laughs> is to get fuel from the mechanical pump down there usually up here <clears throat> to here. Now, between this fuel line <clears throat> and going into the carburetor is a filter. It's a five micron filter. We've talked about this in a lot of different places. This five mi micron filter was put in by Rochester to keep anything, any garbage, anything bigger than five microns from getting to their carburetor because they knew it would clog up. Okay, Wix 330-48. Write that down. The Wix filter is about the size of your thumb. It's a Wix brand, 330-48. Okay. I would have, if you were running a carburetor, I would have a couple of those in your glove box, right? So, first thing I would do, <clears throat> plugs, plug wires, cap rotor, kind of get it, you know, and then I would put a carburetor filter in there. Take it loose, take a look at it, because that will tell you the condition of the tanks. Chances are there's only going to be one inline filter, and chances are it's going to be, usually it's 100 microns. That's, that's a standard filter, an inline filter. Uh, looking at that carburetor filter in the front will give you an indicator as to uh, how long it's been sitting there, what the condition is of fuel, and if it's been maintained. And if that sucker's clogged, well, put a new one in and then check it, because it could be that's an indication that the fuel tanks are full of garbage and maybe the fuel filter even at 100 microns uh, I've seen some with no filter in them okay so you need to look and see maybe stick your head up under there and see what kind of filter you have and if you want to put a filter in there I've got another video that talks about this two filter system but a, a Wix 330 dash uh, no um, 33689. That's it. Wix 33689 is an inline 7 micron filter that uh, <clears throat> when you come up to the coach, I'd put that on there right away to make sure that in, nothing garbage gets in the carburetor. Right? We drove that thing. Now, the engine was, was rebuilt. It was a 403, and it, and it was it had been maintained, but <clears throat> we did not do a lot of checks, all right? And it ultimately bit us. I knew this bracket was missing, 
But see, if I would have tightened the belts up, we probably would have made it. But you know, here's the thing. We say we're going to made it. <clears throat> By the time we got to Denver, we landed <laughs> with the Jaguar in a blizzard. Okay? That was not the place that we should have been with that GMC. So I really think uh, leaving it one day's drive away from Dennis Place uh, uh, secured uh, and to know what's going to be needed to get it home, uh, uh, I'm going to get with Dennis and see if he can get with uh, Kanamati and get one of these these metal brackets. Uh, maybe Jeff Serum has one. This this is a bracket. We had actually made several of these. I thought I had some, and I, I, I couldn't find them. But this is a bracket that will uh, eliminate the pull of that alternator going forward, which probably would have saved us on the road. But, hey, that means that we wouldn't have enjoyed uh, uh, Clinton, Oklahoma, um, Route 66, <clears throat> some great uh, food, some great friends. Uh, and it was a wonderful time. Now, even though I wasn't prepared, you should be more prepared than we were. You know, maybe this is a good Bernstein Bears uh, <laughs> video. Um, but uh, now, fuel injection. <clears throat> you need to be sure, again, that you have 10 microns or less uh, a filter going to your throttle body. No matter what's in there, you say, well, it's running. Please, please, guys, go look at the filter system that's in there and find out what you've got in there. If it's got a single inline filter, again, the Wix number is 33689. Put that in there. That's a 7 micron filter. All right. That will keep any of the garbage or anything. Because when you buy these things, <clears throat> chances are they've been sitting around. And chances are metal tanks have been sitting around with fuel in them, have condensed, and there's some corrosion in there. All right, so uh, having clean fuel is a big deal, not only with the carburetor, but with fuel injection. Uh, changing the injectors are not a big deal after uh, I uh, watched a video on Phytech, by the way, on how to do it. But it sure is easy just to keep garbage away from the, the injectors are very, very reliable. If you can keep the garbage out of them, all right? So if you do have a fuel injection system on your coach, this coach that you buy, go investigate what kind of fuel filters are in this thing, okay? And just do yourself a favor just to get home, put that in, all right? <coughs> we had the alternator go out, and I put a one-wire alternator, which I have on this one, uh, uh, and we had fresh belts. I checked the water pump. Now, when you've got all the belts off, you can try to wiggle the water pump pulley and see if you've got play in the uh, fan clutch. Spin the fan clutch. It should go about a half to three quarters of a turn and stop. If it's freewheeling all the way around, uh, you may need a fan clutch. Uh, fan clutch is a uh, 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 Hayden... Uh, uh, 47, 27, 47. That's it. Hayden, 27, 47. That's a heavy duty. 2707 is a light duty. 2797 sounds like a B-52 going off. You don't want that. Um, so 27, 47 fan clutch. And if, if it moves or it spins freely, you need a fan clutch. If you see movement in the uh, water pump pulley, look underneath the water pump and there is a hole in the snout that goes out here's your pulley and right up under here is a, is a is a, a pee hole we pull look and see if you have any residue line or any rust line coming out of that that we pull because there are two seals in there there's a rubber seal and a ceramic seal because there's hot water the uh, ceramic seal will leak slightly if the rubber seal fails uh, and it's designed for that hole to show a little bit of residue. So you want to go check that. Okay. Uh, uh, 7450 uh, and a 7570. 
are the belts. But don't just go by that because over the years, somebody may have changed a pulley. Um, actually, on, um, on Dennis Coach, we went to a half inch shorter, I believe, wasn't it, Dennis? Um, so whatever belt is on your coach, get extra belts. Dennis had to walk 1.3 miles, got a ride back <laughs> from, from the auto parts store to get a belt so we could get over to him. Um, whatever belt is on your coach that you find that you can tighten up, which you should tighten up before you leave, make sure you have extra of that belt. Okay? 50 years, you just don't know what somebody else has done. Okay? Uh, also want to look at the, uh, the uh, heater hoses. Be sure they're not nasty looking or cracked or anything like that. You want to <coughs> tighten all your uh, clamps. Just give them, a, give them a snug. Get them all tight. All right. Look for any leaks. Down in front here is your oil uh, sender. And if there's a leak down front, you'll see oil down there. Right here is your water temperature sender. <coughs> if uh, it's got a wire hooked up to it, if your water temperature gauge doesn't work, see if the wire is hooked up. And if it is hooked up, and doesn't even work, and ground the wire and the gauge should fill. Same thing with the oil. <coughs> if you don't have any oil reading, there's the oil sender right there. Take the wire off of it and ground it and watch your gauge. See if it moves. You may need an oil sender. I mean, it is a mechanical device. Okay? You really need to know what your water temperature is and your oil pressure. Okay? <coughs> I tell you, Going on the road was a wonderful time. I had a great time. Mark, you're, you're awesome. And uh, Dennis, we had a great time. But I really did take it out of me. Um, I, 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 it takes a little bit uh, of uh, energy to uh, put these videos together. And <coughs> Next couple of days, I'm going to be back into the, into the routine. We've got a couple of several episodes to do. So hang with us. Um, <coughs> I'm still getting over <laughs> that crazy drive. I'm glad. I hope you guys came with us. It was a fun time. And um, I'm hoping next year to do some more of this. Got to get over it here. And got to get warmer. Got to get warmer. All right. Well, look, I hope this has helped a little bit. <coughs> uh of course, you want to tighten all your bolts. You want to everything. But if you're going to keep this thing, bring some stuff and, and give it a good shot. Give it some plug wires. <coughs> Excuse me. Give it some filters. Check everything out. And check it halfway through your drive, too, <laughs> which I should have done. All right. Thanks for your time. Hit like and um, all that kind of stuff. And uh, give me some comments. Give me some uh, uh, input on some other things you want me to talk about because we're kind of ending. You know, you push hard to get this that one project done and you let it down and you relax. And now we're going to go into some more things. So give me some comments as to what you'd like to see me do now. It's cold now, so I'm not going to be underneath this thing too much. So uh, think about that. Uh, tell me what you'd like to talk about. Maybe interior stuff. Um, talk to you then.